Thank you, Madam President, trustees, and members of our community are here with us in person and those who are joining us by remote. Uh, as we cross over mid-October of this 22-23 school year, we're really grateful to see the progress that our students, staff, and schools are making throughout this fall. Was delighted, uh, wasn't able to be there personally, but delighted to see Huron High School had the opportunity to host former Huron High grad, attorney, and author Shirley Ann Huguchi. You can see a, a story about this here. Um, on Friday, September 23rd, Ms. Huguchi shared a reading from her book, Setsuko's Secret, about life as a third generation Japanese American learning about the incarceration of her parents and their families during World War II at the Heart Mountain Camp in Wyoming. Ms. Higuchi is now a lawyer for the American Psychological Association, a past president of the D.C. Bar, and chair of the Heart Mountain Wyoming Foundation, which operates a museum on the site of the former camp. Uh, trustees, there's a great story on AAPS News if you want to hear and see more about that. Uh, it was just a delight also to join a Community High School last Thursday. Um, they had planned for just a small assembly event, and trustees, it got big over, <laughs> bigger overnight, uh, but it was wonderful to see um, uh, some of the um, Jones School alums and get to visit with them, the Payne brothers and others. Um, so this dedication was held to kick off the 100th anniversary celebration of the Jones School building, now Community High School. The ceremony was at the beginning of this year of learning, uh, which they've called 100 Years of Hidden History, honoring the histories and legacies of Black Ann Arbor. So this is designed to honor the African-American and Black community in what is now Carytown. And you can see some of the historic photos here. Um, a larger, more formal celebration is planned near the end of the school year, where CHS students and team hope to unveil a permanent historical marker honoring Jones School and the Black community of Ann Arbor. You can go to the link uh, in our update this evening, trustees to donate uh, to the marker, um, and we're really excited to, for the students at Community High School to tell these stories, to learn about and tell these stories and share them uh, with all of Ann Arbor. October is National Principals Month. National Principals Month is just an opportunity for us to celebrate and honor our impressive school leaders, we recognize that our principals have been working tirelessly and continue uh, to have challenging circumstances across our schools on, on some days, and they are strengthening and supporting their school teams and school communities while keeping a focus on learning and a safe school environment. So I really appreciate our school principals every day. I'm impressed with their work every day. Uh, we value the support and connection they provide to our students, staff, and families. Uh, trustees, we've been celebrating all month, and uh, I wanted to acknowledge this evening National Hispanic American Heritage Month. Each year, our nation observes National Hispanic American Heritage Month by honoring the histories, cultures, and contributions of America. Americans whose ancestors arrived here from Mexico, Spain, Central and South America, and the Caribbean. In the Ann Arbor Public Schools, we celebrate the valued contributions of Hispanic Americans on every day of the school year, and we also enjoy participating in the national observance. Uh, this celebration gives us an opportunity to listen and learn even more about the rich diversity within Hispanic communities and the deep connections to all facets of American culture, literature, and history. I want to give a shout out to Ms. Colby 
uh, Media Center uh, Maven, who helped us today with just kind of a photo assembly so you could see trustees uh, without taking time to ride all around town. You could see some of the uh, exciting uh, displays uh, across our schools. So we appreciate the uh, interdisciplinary units uh, at middle and K-8 Spanish art, music, and PE classes have been joining together to uh, explore their learning. And this uh, that you're seeing now are really media center focus at elementary, middle, K-8, and high schools. Uh, we know we are a stronger Ann Arbor Public Schools community as we honor, embrace, and celebrate our diversity, continually create a culture of belonging for all, and value the connections that unite us as an inclusive Ann Arbor community. So um, I appreciate all of these photos so that you can see a little bit of what's going on in the schools. Um, Mr. Cluley and I had the honor uh, day before yesterday on Monday to share in the annual Kiwanis Luncheon. And now, trustees, you may recall that during COVID, they've really changed their approach that the Kiwanis has partnered with Washtenaw Community College. You can see us, uh, we were there at uh, Washtenaw Community College on Monday. Uh, the Kiwanis Club has established and funded uh, WCC Foundation scholarships to provide full ride scholarships and additional assistance for qualified students who attend WCC. So their donation on Monday was $88,500, and that will support our students uh, with needs in continuing their education at WCC. Each Kiwanis scholarship covers full tuition and books for one full school year and has an approximate value of $3,500. President Rose Belanca was with us, as she always is, uh, for this event, and it was truly just a great celebration of the difference that a village can make in supporting our students. We do have a brief video. It's actually longer, and I'll make it available, trustees, if you want to watch the full, uh, but we have a brief excerpt of messages from the students that Mr. Cluley would like to share. Hello, my name is Christy Kazi. I'm recording this video to express my gratitude for the Kiwani Scholarship. So a little bit about me is that I moved to the United States from Lebanon around five years ago before the situation got really bad, but we're loving it here. Um, so for my future education goals, I'm planning on transferring from Washtenaw to the University of Michigan after two years, although I really love it. But my sister transferred and she really loves it. Um, and I'm planning on transferring into psychology and probably studying a little more to become a therapist. My mom is a teacher um, with fourth grade kids and I've shadowed her a little bit and I think I would really like working with kids as well. Um, so thank you so much for the scholarship and I hope you have a great day. I am David Kwok, and I'm a junior at WCC. I'm currently in the general education program while building my portfolio in order to transfer to a school for architecture, and I would like to thank Kiwanis for their scholarship. The scholarship has been an amazing financial help, which helped me to focus and excel in my schoolwork. As a recipient of the scholarship, I would like to thank Kiwanis again for their help. Hi, my name is Avni Carter and I am at my second to last semester at WCC. I was born and raised in Ann Arbor. I absolutely adore the artist Prince, and I am a proud recipient of the Kiwana Scholarship. Some education goals that I have as of currently is not only to graduate with my associates in spring of 2023, but to transfer to a four-year university in fall of 2023 to major in theater or film and media studies. So I am super, super excited for that. I just want to thank all the fundraising programs so, so much for giving students like me the opportunity to not have to worry about paying for school. It relieves so much stress off my back and it allows me to not only focus on my education, but as well as the hobbies that'll get me to places in the future. Thank you so much.
Very good. There are more stories uh, where those came from, and thanks to Washington Community Foundation for sharing that video with us. Trustees, I'll get that to you. And Trustee Kara Harrell, a shout out. I don't know if you recognize any of the faces, but I bet you do. Under FERPA law, I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> this is correct. Uh, Alana's foundation, uh, we were delighted, uh, shared their generosity with us at, in sponsoring a flu clinic at Pioneer High School on Monday. We were anticipating maybe uh, administering about 200 flu vaccines. Entire families came, and before the end of the event, we had given 300 flu vaccines. Wow. A shout out to Alana's aunts, who were actually at Pioneer Clinic in serving in her memory by helping others protect against the flu. Um, and the clinic had a very successful turnout. Um, I do appreciate the work of this foundation and appreciate them partnering with the Ann Arbor Public Schools. And just a great reminder in October that, that if we haven't gotten our flu shots, now would be a great time uh, because we are preparing for the change in weather and uh, want to be fully protected. Walk, bike, or roll to school day today. I uh, was so excited to see our schools marking the 26th annual National Walk and Roll to School Day. And school communities across Ann Arbor, the state of Michigan, and the county are walking and rolling to highlight the importance of safe and active travel. Um, in 2016, the National Center for Safe Routes to School launched the Vision Zero for Youth Initiative, connecting walk, bike, and roll to school day events with communities and elected officials, making a commitment to promote safe walking and rolling and to eliminate fatal and serious traffic accidents. I won't go through all of their talking points, but we know that communities benefit from the efforts of National Walk and Roll to School Day Thurston is just uh, a poster child. Look at these great uh, video. They are rocking there. And uh, I believe they're one of the schools that has us even drop off bus students a little ways away from the school so that everybody walks in on this day. So there they are. We were delighted over the past couple of days to see the fielding team and their work with Mitchell Elementary uh, on their new school design engagement. O over the past two days, the team uh, has met with students, teachers, school leaders, parents, and members of the district leadership team. A main purpose has been to introduce the groups to the ideas about how IB learning, international baccalaureate learning, can best be supported by the setting of the school building. A large set of broad exemplar designs and patterns were shared, and each group engaged interactively to prioritize their values in supporting the IB program. I got to stop by for a few minutes last night with a small group of uh, a very active group of parents and students and staff. Um, and I saw a great dialogue ongoing. And trustees, I wanted to share with you that outdoor learning spaces was the top number of dots I saw on about 20 different uh, characteristics of a school. There it is, outdoor classroom. The kids and all staff and families loved that idea. Um, we will uh, bring back, uh, members of the bond committee are aware, we will bring back the results of this engagement process back to the community again in the winter, and uh, then we will receive more feedback. And you know, trustees, this is leading to a design uh, a right around spring break. So the, the uh, timeline uh, that we've worked through is a design process that would come to the board around uh, the end of March. Now, the Pathways Program engagement process will unfold uh, very similarly to Mitchell, and that will happen next week. 
Um, our environmental sustainability work trustees is really uh, gearing up, as you know. Uh, Mr. Latzana has been invited to present the AAPS COVID ventilation program to a national audience at the end of the month in a U.S. Green Building Council webinar. Uh, Mr. Latzana has also been engaged in national level peer district discussions regarding the development of environmental plans. So the Environmental Task Force has reviewed a number of districts, but now we're moving into actual ongoing conversation to review their environmental plans and policies that are currently in progress. And most recently, we've engaged with Oakland Unified, Baltimore, and Salt Lake City school districts to learn and share ideas and progress. Uh, trustees, I don't think I've been able to even share this with you uh, personally yet, but we were recently invited uh, to uh, be a part as one of only 20 districts across the country to participate in a summit on sustainable schools that will fall on November 9 through 11. It is organized by the National Superintendents Association, AASA, and Mr. Lautzana and I look forward to learning together with the other leading districts from across the country and sharing what we learn when we get back. Uh, Ms. Bacalor will be sharing another update this evening on before and after school programs, but just a reminder that we continue to interview and hire uh, for candidates in our child care program. We are focused on continuing to add locations as we move through this school year. We are struggling a bit right now, trustees, with a delay on the Laura required uh, uh, checks, background checks and fingerprints. And so we've heard from the state to expect about a 45 day uh, time frame. And of course that makes it difficult for candidates to just hang around and wait for that. So I have asked to do some research to see how we may perhaps engage with our legislators or some way to see if the state could get some extra help. Uh, you know that the checks that are required for childcare are more in depth than even what our teachers and school teams have to go through. So this is an FBI um, kind of thing. So um, we've introduced something new this evening, trustees. We're just trying it out. Mr. Cooley put it together for you. Uh, just as a way to make sure that all of our communications that are occurring every day, I don't know about you, but my feed is busy all the time. Uh, so once a month, we're just putting together a handout for you to just review all of this AAPS district news stories, the superintendent messages, the podcasts and their topics, and, uh, and all of the ways that we communicate. I do want to give a shout out to uh, Andrew Cluley and John Staley. Uh, during August, they uh, updated our uh, h2schools.org website. So I don't know if you've had a chance to see that, but it does have a little bit of a new look. And of course, uh, the communication team is sharing every Friday morning our AAPS COVID um, update in those status emails each week. It was a delight this week to have Mr. Emil Latzana as our guest on the H2 Schools podcast. I do believe that podcast, it took us a while, but I believe it's been picked up um, by uh, Mr. Cluley Google, or what's the right name? Apple, yes. So I've been getting it at Buzzsprout, which is a little bit smaller of a, of a distribution, but now you should be able to see that on your Apple podcast, which is hopefully very convenient for folks. Uh, I appreciate uh, the partnership and support of our trustees and of our students and staff and parents and community and appreciate the opportunity to share this update this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Swift.